Hi there everyone, and welcome to another weekly update. Um, pretty, another, another busy week, pretty busy week, lots going on. Um, UC Expo was this week in London, um, big uh, UC um, a vendor event with you know lots of different uh, it's kind of cross it's cross industry so it, it's not a purely Microsoft event there's uh, there's other like Cisco are there as well and, and Avaya and all the other players um, but Microsoft are a big part of it seemed a little bit smaller this year maybe um, and Microsoft seemed to have a little bit more by percentage but maybe that's just my perception of it um, so no real kind of big announcements on Skype for Business or on kind of development some good um, some good stats, some interesting stats um, about around kind of Skype for Business generally. Um, if you were kind of paying attention to my um, to my Twitter feed over the past couple of days, I was putting some of those out, uh, and then also something. So I only only went to the, one of the two days. I went to the first day, and something I noticed halfway through. So I went to some of the sessions. Um, I had a good chance to go to the sessions this year, uh, and there was a really good. Um, mix of diversity of speakers um, from like Microsoft representation and it, it led me to do some research on the event um, and I've I, I put out a, a kind of a tweet um, a couple of days ago um, that uh, that kind of talks about this um, it's, it's interesting actually I'm just going to read it out so talking specifically about gender diversity at tech events so um, this is something I've you know I, I care about. I think it's important. Um, I I do um, some stuff uh, in my local town in the community events there. Uh, I got you know I attend those as well, and I know they're also and they they do a, an annual conference as well, and I know they care a lot about um, diversity of speakers. Um, and it and we're starting to see some speakers as well require a you know a diversity statement. Um, and uh, and kind of terms and conditions, if you like, for, for how people will be treated before they agree to speak at particular events and conferences. So, you know, I thought that thought it was interesting. I noticed it on kind of Wednesday, Thursday. So I went and did some research just by looking at the list of speakers for UC Expo. So, across all the speakers at UC Expo, fifteen percent were female. Um, the percentage of Microsoft speakers which were female was forty four percent. And so, if you if you took all the Microsoft speakers at UC Expo and took them out of the pool of all the speakers, then what's left would be 12% female. So Microsoft making a really big concerted positive effort. We, I kind of noticed it a build actually, um, and I know, I know it's something uh, Scott Hanselman has been. Um, I'm sure many others as well in his team have been pushing, um, but I, I just kind of know that because I know he. Uh, has a hand in who speaks at Build and, and the things that get spoken about as he kind of heads up that team now. So um, it's good to see him pushing there. It's good to see obviously that filtering through all of Microsoft even to a, you know, what is a relatively small local event, UC Expo. So that was really good to see. And actually the speakers were like, the speakers were fantastic as well. I completely kind of side point that the um, real positivity and uh, a really good atmosphere as well. Um, really upbeat, upbeat talks, and they all knew their stuff. Um, uh, some good stuff around Skype for Business, but also Microsoft Teams as well. Um, like I say, no, no real kind of announcements to make, but it was, um, yeah, it was just to kind of, it was good to, good to get the lay of the land again. Um, yeah, it was good to, all, all, all around, like UC Expo. Anyways, pretty good event. It was good to catch up. I kind of went more to kind of catch up with people, um, see what everyone else is up to, see who's new, see who's not there, um, and things like that. So that was UC Expo. Uh, some other things happening. Um, so uh, this is kind of interesting, actually. So um, use it, I guess, use it as a bellwether of what's happening inside Microsoft. Um, so the MVP program um, it has just announced a new award category. So uh, a new AI MVP award category. Now, this was kind of surprising to me because uh, I don't think award categories happen all that often. Uh, it's it's interesting they're carving out AI as a new category. So to see that being publicly announced uh, is interesting. It tells you if you didn't need telling already that AI is a big deal for Microsoft. 
it's you know it's um it's an area that people are coalescing around we're seeing some big names moving over to ai um gux has moved over from uh dx um over to over to, to look at ai and um and be part of that team uh and so it, it's really interesting to see how microsoft formalizing a team around this um so you can read that announcement um, what else, what else, what else? So there are some new, there's some changes um, to Graph um, and the Graph API. So there's some new APIs for insights. And what that means is that they are going to start retiring or discontinuing the GQL APIs. So what there is, is there's a new uh, used API. So literally that is for telling you it's an API you can call and it returns a list of documents that users have been working with or you know have used. Um, there's a shared one. Again, um, you can see documents that have been shared or that other people have shared uh, for a particular user. Um, and those two are new into the uh, yeah into the the insights API. They're all part of the graph. They sit under the graph.microsoft.com namespace. Uh, you can access them now, they're in beta, so that's the graph.microsoft.com slash beta namespace. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, um, you use them exactly like all the others. Um, yeah, and so if you are, if you use the um, the Office Graph GQL APIs today, you have you have a while, you have until the end of August to, um, to move over, and then that's when they get discontinued. So, uh, yeah, just so you know, that's happening. And uh, so we've had a a new release of Visual Studio, the Visual Studio 27 preview. And what's interesting for you uh, in that, apart from the fact that it's new and exciting, um, is that there's a new connected services uh, kind of section, like not even a tab, but like it lives under a project. So it's it's one of the top level items in the tree when you drop open a project. Uh, where properties is, sort of near there, uh, there's a connected services entry. Um, and that allows you to quickly hook into uh, Office Graph or some other things as well. It's where Insights is going to live um, and it's where Cloud Storage is going to live as well. So um, a really easy way of hooking into Microsoft Graph APIs from there as well. Um, da, 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 what else, what else, what else? Um, mm, so, yeah, so another blog post that I thought was interesting is just, it's titled Microsoft Graph or the Azure AD Graph. And it's uh, it's a Microsoft blog post, it's come from the Office Dev Center. Um, and it's really, should you be using Microsoft Graph or should you be using the Azure AD Graph? And the, um, the overall kind of takeaway uh, is that um, you should be using the Microsoft Graph wherever you can. Um, there are a few places where you have to still use the Azure AD Graph um, for things you want to get done. That gap is closing. Uh, they think that within inside six months they'll have, they'll have closed the gap and that's when they'll, they can start looking at um, taking away the Azure AD Graph. But for right now, nothing's changed. That's not the case. There is still an Azure AD Graph. Don't worry about it. Um, it's not going anywhere, but if you're using it, you should probably take a look at the things you're using it for and see if you can now do them in the Microsoft Graph and if you can start to move over. Um, because the, um, the writing's on the wall, the end of the road is visible. Um, so uh, take a look and don't get left out in the cold, I guess. Um, yeah, so I think, I think that's kind of it for this week. Um, Kind of a short one, but it's. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to put out some stuff this weekend if I get a chance around some of the the, uh, the Scott for Business channels for Bot Framework. Um, so maybe look out for some blog posts there. Um, I put out a load of blog posts this week actually, all around um, Ubiquity Unify Kit, which is nothing to do with Scott for Business and nothing to do with development. Um, but I had a really fun weekend a couple of weekends ago um, because I kind of I decided to to replace uh, the the Wi-Fi in my house with um, Ubiquity Unify gear. Um, so I, I went and bought a load of 
Unify gear and I was I had some questions before I bought it that I couldn't find the answers to so I kind of bought the, some of the kit anyway and then based on those once having looked at it bought the rest of the kit but I, I did some videos kind of trying to answer all the questions I had and it's really if you're if you're one of those people like me where you really want to know everything about the thing before you buy it so you can plan accordingly and try and answer all the questions because you don't want to you don't want to end up in a kind of edge case that you're having to work around or like it almost works but it doesn't quite do this thing I wanted it to do so you kind of want to head all those off first especially if it's um, something like home Wi-Fi uh, mesh Wi-Fi where you are wiring in uh, mesh repeaters you kind of want to have all that stuff worked out so you know where the cable lays are going to go whether you can have enough free ports what's going to go where um, and all that kind of fun stuff so yeah I am um, so I did some videos kind of just answering all that stuff as I was doing the um, like the unboxing and the setting up. And then last weekend I kind of sat down and edited them all and put them on a schedule to go out this week. So they've been going out all this week. Um, so you can go back and look at uh, my blog if you want to catch up on them. There is a special category now. I am going to do a blog post kind of tying all together and talking about the whole experience. Um, so maybe look out for that, but that's the only other thing that's been going on this week. So. Yeah, so I'm going to try and put out some blog posts over the weekend about Bot Framework and maybe Skype for Vincent as well, because uh, there's some new interesting stuff happening with the health templates as well, so look out for that next week. Um, but yeah, so have a, have a lovely week. Um, if you were at all affected by the WannaCry stuff from um, two weeks ago, last week uh, I guess it was um, then hopefully that's blowing over for you now it's really hard to tell if it actually is blowing over because kind of media aren't reporting anymore because you know it's old news but it's it's hard to tell if it's still affecting or not so uh, if it is still affecting you then sorry maybe let me know it'd be interesting actually um, but yeah have a great weekend and I will talk to you next week <laughs>